child support. And um, before we go any further, I have to advise you that you have the right to request a court appointed attorney. You have the right to request a court appointed attorney. If you make that request, we will postpone today's hearing to give you time to talk with your lawyer. And Ms. Schaub, are you requesting a court appointed attorney today? Uh, no. Okay. No, Ms. Schaub, please call the case. This is the first show cause hearing for Ms. Schaub. Parties have a second order modifying order for custody, support, and parenting time signed December 15th, 2022, which orders Ms. Schaub to contribute child support and medical support for one child in the amount of $605 per month. And that began January of this year. The balance on the account currently owed is $4,882, of which $4,840 is owed to a third-party custodian, and then there are fees. We have an open withholding to unemployment, but there have been no payments on the account since charges began. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, Ms. Schaub, are you uh, employed at this time? Yes, I just came back to work in uh, July. Okay, and uh, who is your employer? Brian Travers Continuous. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll need to get an income withholding order out to Grand Travers Continuous. And Ms. Schaub, are you uh, full-time or part-time? Full-time. Okay. And uh, what caused you to not be working for uh, for a period of time? Um, I went to a rehab facility and that was back in December, um, till February. Um, and then I also went to, and was incarcerated for a month and a half. So the majority of the time that this child support thing started, I have been, uh, not at work. Um, so I've incurred a lot of debt and I've been playing the catch up game and it's been very, very difficult because on top of, $605, which is far too much for me to be able to afford. I've got my normal living, you know, expenses. And now I've got fines and costs because I got in trouble. I've got attorney fees. Um, I mean, my property taxes are due. My propane needs to be filled. So there's been, you know, a lot going on that has prevented me from paying $605 a month. However, I've been making sure to stay in contact. I've been getting my son and providing for him um, outside of the child support. So um, I'm not really sure what to say or, or do about this, but $605 a month is a lot of money well, uh, on top. If you'd like to have your child support reduced, you should file a motion regarding support. I and did. It okay. had me send it to Lansing. No. I'm, I'm pretty new to all of this. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I, I'm right. And so, when I went into friend of the court, I asked for help and the ladies were not very helpful there. I'm sorry about that. What uh, what I would recommend is um, if you don't have a computer where you are, go to the library, go online, go to our front of the court website. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the form that you need is available on that website. You'll be able to print it out of the library. It's called a motion regarding support, and it comes with instructions. Okay. Okay. And you're you're not you're you're gonna file it. You're gonna file a paper copy of it with our um, court clerk, and they're located um, at the Griffin Hall of Justice in Traverse City. Yeah, I've already went through that whole ringer, and um, I must have had the wrong form um, okay. because nobody there knew what to do with what I had. So okay. Um, so uh, try to you know locate the motion regarding support. Um, also, another website you might want to look at is michiganlegalhelp.org. Yep. I would recommend that one as well. Okay. Um, so that's those are the steps you could take to see about having your support reduced. In the meantime, this order does have to remain in effect. Uh, I'm not going to hold you in contempt today. I think you've shown good cause. Uh, and uh, the order to show cause will be dismissed. Uh, before we get started, um, I have to advise you. you that you have the right to request a court-appointed attorney. If you make that request, we will postpone today's hearing 
to give you time to talk with your lawyer. And Mr. Stack, are you requesting a court-appointed attorney today? No, I'm not, Your Honor. All right. Uh, so, Ms. Mullen, if you would please call yes. the case. Uh, this is Mr. Stack's first show cause hearing before the court. Parties have an order for custody, support, and parenting time, signed October 28th, 2022, which orders him to contribute child support, health insurance premiums, and medical support for two children in the amount of $371 per month. The current balance owed on the account is $3,899.65, of which $3,847.15 is owed to Ms. Rousseau in child support and medical support, and then there are fees. Payments on the account in the past year, we had an active with income withholding January and February of this year. Uh, support was paid, and then the last payment was March of this year, $195.17 posted to the account. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Stack, did something happen in March? Yeah, actually, well, it happened in February. I was working for Garage Door Services. Um, I had started working for them and um, right before Christmas, middle of middle of December, I'd say. Um, and I ended up falling. I had an accident there, and I fell about 15 feet off the ladder. And uh, so when I left... Um, I, I, I assumed I was coming back. Um, I was, I was supposed to be getting, uh, workman's compensation and stuff like that. And that, that never came to fruition. And then, uh, so since I had been with garage door sales that long up until, um, early March, late February, my insurance, I lost my state insurance. And because I didn't work for garage door services long enough, I didn't get insurance through them. So it kind of left me in a little bit of a pickle. Um, I ended up getting a, a right now I'm framing. Uh, that's what I've been doing this summer for the season. I'll be finishing up the season probably at the end of, um, I don't know, probably at the end of September um, where I'll have a, uh, I should have a, a regular Monday through Friday job right now. I've, I've been working, um, Framing's new for me and something I, I wanted to get into something different. Um, and so I'm kind of like the greenhorn. Um, right now I'm getting paid 20 an hour and I'll be getting 1099 at the end of the year. Um, but it's, it's been a, it's been kind of a struggle. I'm not used to the, you know, if the trusses aren't there, you know, or if it takes a week for the get the trusses, we don't have anything else lined up or for instance today, um, just being rained out. And so, um, it's played a pretty big role in this whole summer and trying to keep up on bills and everything like that. Um, I do, I do pick up the the boys every other weekend and, and, um, and we spend a lot of, we spend the weekends together and stuff like that. And um, I don't know that I, I, I'm trying, like, I'm trying to tell you what happened and I'm trying not to make excuses at the same time because there is no excuse. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what bills do you have? Oh, I wrote them down. Okay, so right now I'm paying four hundred for my car payment, and I've got um, three more payments to go, and that and that'll be paid off. My brother helped me out last year um, and helped me get a vehicle, and so I've been paying him off. Um, my car insurance is two hundred and eighty-four bucks a month through State Farm. Um, what else? Uh, Five hundred dollars rent, and then there's like my cell phone sixty-five. Uh, Oh, no, so something else. The storage is 115 and then gas is really bad. And that's another thing I'm not used to is, is the gasoline. When we work, when we work about 45 minutes to an hour away from the area, I'll usually get like a per diem. And even the per diem isn't really covering the gas at this point. But um, I, I guess a lot of people tell me maybe I should find a different contractor or um, maybe find something else to do. But I really, I really, really, really want to get this. I want to, I want to be a successful framer, carpenter, and um, I enjoy it. I just okay. I uh, it is there? Uh, it is your uh, is your car insurance uh, paid up? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, are there any eviction proceedings being no. brought against you? No. Nope. All right. And do you have cell, cell service at this time, I assume? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Uh, Ms. Ristow, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. Did you want to say anything about how the lack of support is affecting your household? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. All right, so the statute that I have to apply today is MCL 552.633. And that statute um, states uh, in subsection three that in the absence of proof to the contrary introduced by the payer, the court shall presume that the payer has currently available resources equal to one month of payments under the support order. Um, one month of payments in this case is uh, $371. Um, there's not, there's been no evidence that I can go on uh, at this point to, to find that, uh, that I, that, that doesn't apply. So I have to assume that, uh, that Mr. Stack has that much available under the statute to pay. He hasn't made any payments since March. Um, and we're talking zero. He has enough money to pay for the car, the car insurance, the rent, the cell, the storage, gas. He makes $20 an hour. He indicated that uh, the framing work is not consistent, but at the same time, he complained about how much uh, he had to spend in gas to get to his job. So he must, he must have some work. On the, on the whole, I have to find um, under the statute that, uh, uh, Mr. Stack, that you are in contempt of court for failure to pay child support, all those zeros uh, since March. Even if you would have made, paid 10 bucks, 20 bucks, just something, but you paid zero. So on that basis, I find you in contempt of court, place you on probation for a period of two years. Uh, during that two-year period, you'll have to make your child support payments timely each month. Uh, plus an additional $20 each month towards the arrearage owed. If you don't make those payments, a bench warrant will be issued for your arrest. The amount of the bond will be set at $500, which you'll have to pay or serve five days in jail. Sus uh, suspended jail sentence. As long as you make your payments, uh, there will be no bench warrant. That will conclude our hearing. Thank you. I have to advise Thank you, you that you have the right to request you, a court-appointed attorney. If you make that request, we will postpone today's hearing to give you time to talk with your lawyer. And Ms. Swy, are you requesting a court-appointed attorney today? No. Okay. Uh, Ms. Mullen, please call the case. Thank you. Uh, parties in the case have an er errata notice and correction order signed April 27, 2023, which orders Ms. Swy to contribute child support and medical support for one child in the amount of $84 per month, effective February 2023. The balance on the account currently owed is $626.50, of which $588 is owed to Mr. Hubble in child support and medical support. And then there are fees. Uh, there have been no payments on the account since uh, charges began in this case. And this is her first hearing before the court. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Swy, are you currently employed? Uh, no, I am not. Okay. Um, when were you last employed? It was actually about a month ago. I was working at the Buckle in the mall, um, but it didn't work out because um, of childcare. So I was, had to uh, quit. But um, as soon as my kids start school, which is in a couple of weeks, I do have another job lined up and um, I am going to be paying child support is just at this point in time, I don't have any funds to pay it. It's not that I don't want to. I just literally don't have the funds to. But um, as soon as I do start working, I do have full intentions of paying it. But yes. Okay. And how many children are in this case? Just one. Okay. And what is that child's age? Um, he is six. Okay. All right. Um, and what happened with child care? Um, well, first it was more so just me getting out to work on the weekends because my husband works, you know, Monday through Friday. Um, and there is no one to watch all three of my kids, um, like at all. Um, so I just, it was reduced to, I was able to work on the weekends. So I was working on the weekends. Um, but that turned out not to work out either. Um, because my help is my grandparents and they are both well over 80 years old. And, um, specifically because of the child that is involved in this case, um, he has autism. Um, he, he is independent to a certain degree. Um, but he is, he requires more, I guess, care and attention than, you know, my other, um, nine and 10 year old children do. So it's just, harder for my grandparents to, you know, 
watch him at the age that they are. So I was just unable to work. So okay. until they go back to school, that's just that's what I'm dealt with. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Hubble, was there anything that you wish to say today? No, uh, I understand because uh, I uh, we had a summer schedule that flipped. So she got him during the week now just for the summer because I wanted him to have time with his mom too because I get him the weekdays uh, for all year round besides the summer. So I understand that I made it difficult to work and everything. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, put pressure on anybody or anything or get anybody in trouble. I just, you know, it, it was court ordered. So I get it, you know, whatever you guys need to do. So. Okay. So uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is at this point, I'll dismiss the order to show cause. Um, if we get into, you know, the school year and there's still nothing being paid, then I would imagine this will come back in front of me and I'll have questions. Uh, but we're not there yet. Uh, hopefully that'll take, be taken care of, but otherwise the order to show cause is dismissed. Thank you. DS. Thank you. Uh, parties in the case have an order for custody, support, and parenting time signed October 29th, 2012, which orders Mr. Trombley to contribute child support and medical support for one child in the amount of $387 per month. Balance on the account currently owed is $4,510.06 of which $4,405.06 is owed to Miss Addison in child care, child support, and medical support. And then there are fees uh, owed as well. Uh, there was prior enforcement, but that dated back to 2014. Payments on the account in the past year. Uh, we had an income withholding that was productive August of 2022, December 22, and January of this year. Current plus arrearages were paid on the account. And then there was an involuntary uh, intercept in July of this year for $114.88. And that was the last payment made. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Mr. Trombley, was uh, there anything that you wanted to, to say in response to the allegations? Um, I, I relocated to the Upper Peninsula um, late last spring, acquired a, a, a job. And on that job, I had a bad accident at work and I amputated a finger on my left hand. Um, there was a lot of out of pocket costs directly with that. Um, physical therapy, a surgery um, that kept me out of work for a while. And my orthopedic actually told me that. Um, it could be two to three years before I get somewhat use of that left hand. So there was a reason I wasn't working. It, 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 I understand my responsibility and, and I, I get it and I've never neglected it. I'm just, I, I full time now have a job um, and willing to fulfill that responsibility. Okay. Uh, and are you self-employed or do you work for somebody else? No, I work for uh, a cooperative in Bruce Crossing, Michigan. Um, okay. It, what, it, what is the, the name? Settlers, S-E-T-T-L-E-R-S, -T -T -E co-op. Ms. Mullen, uh, do you need any particular information regarding that employer? Pardon me? Oh, uh, I was talking to our uh, friend of the court enforcement oh. supervisor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Trombley, yeah. did you say Detzler's with a D, mm -hmm. sir? S is in Steve. That's S E T Z L E R, sir? Two T's. Okay. -E -T -T -L -E -R -S. Thank you. <laughs> and that it was in Bruce Crossings? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And sir, are you uh, a W-2 employee where we could submit a withholding to that co-op? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So we will try to issue a withholding. You would receive a copy as well as your employer. If there's any um, issues we with uh, finding that company, we will um, give you a call. Okay, sir? Sounds good. So, uh, Mr. Trombley, um, do you know how to make uh, payments directly um, while this is all getting set up? See, this is another thing with me is I was 
trying to find the avenue to do that. And I wasn't completely sure how to do that because I have no knowledge of a caseworker or a, a caseworker number or uh, somebody, a direct contact with my case directly. So if I could get some of that literature to at least a business card or something, that way I, we, uh, I can transmit my information as it's going on as well. Could we send him some, some of that information, Ms. Mullen? Absolutely. Mr. Trombley, your case manager is Steve Greenman. Um, and so we'll send you his card along with um, some different ways to pay if we don't have a withholding. Um, and we'll we'll get that taken care of for you. You're also welcome to submit medical if you'd like to indicate, obviously, next time around, if there's any issues that keep you from working or there's ongoing mm -hmm. issues. Um, if you let us know, we would stay enforcement um, with that information. I would, in all honesty, I would prefer it being withheld from my payroll. Okay. We'll see what we can it's do to make that easier. happen. Okay. okay so, uh, Mr. Trombley, I'm going to uh, adjourn this and uh, to, to give you a chance to uh, get that paperwork. And uh, we'll come back and see uh, what the status is uh, in 30 to 60 days. Thank you. The date and time set for a Thank hearing on defendant's <laughs> objection to child care uh, charges. Appearing at today's hearing via Zoom, there being no objections, is plaintiff Emily Kroll with her attorney, Melissa Umulus, and a defendant, Mark Kroll, with his attorney, Jeffrey Norman. And Mr. Norman, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, objection is uh, based primarily on the following. Uh, first of all, there's a couple of provisions in the judgment of divorce uh, that still remains in uh, force in effect. Um, one of the provisions states it is further ordered that neither party shall seek a review of child support before April 30, 2025. Um, the other provision that's relevant here is it is further ordered that if either party is unable to parent during his or her parenting time, and that inability includes six hours or more, the other parent will have the right of first refusal to parent the children during that time. Uh, Dr. Crow was paying an agreed upon amount of $5,000 per month, and that's an upward deviation of about $1,600. Um, practically speaking, the objections <clears throat> are based on, on the following. Uh, this increases for child care costs. Um, the plaintiff works from home. Uh, the children are 10 and 12 years old. The 12 year old is old enough to babysit other children and in fact does babysit other children. And uh, when she's doing that, she's not even uh, attending or present for this child care that they're requesting uh, reimbursement for. And last, um, Dr. Kroll has people who are available uh, to provide child care to these minor children if it's needed. So that's the basis of the objection, Your Honor. And that's all I have. Is this uh, is this a situation where there's a, is there a claim that the charges themselves are fraudulent in some way? I don't think, not fraudulent, but just other than what I've stated, we're not even certain that the 12 year old is present during this time and these charges are in fact being incurred. Um, you know, one thing we might seek down the road is an itemization of exactly how this child support is being spent this $5,392 per month. Um, so we don't know if those charges are actually being incurred. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ms. Numulus. Yes, the assertion that one of the children is not present during the times the nanny is there is absolutely not true. Both children are present while the nanny is providing care. In fact, my client is only utilizing the nanny three days per week. She's employed full time with Blue Cross Blue Shield. She has an extremely demanding job. She works five days a week, but is presently only utilizing the child care three days a week due to Dr. Kroll's refusal to contribute to any of the costs. So really, my client could be utilizing child care five days per week, and it would be extremely helpful for her to do so given the demanding nature of her job. Um, but she's not at this point just due to the historical refusal to contribute. And this nanny that uh, my client is using is the party's long-term nanny that they had used all throughout their divorce or um, and their marriage. Um, she's actually been the nanny for the children since Elena was about three years old. And with the exception of, I think, two summers, 
they have used um, this nanny every summer for child care. And so this isn't a new child care provider. This is someone that Dr. Kroll obviously agreed was appropriate to care for the children in the past. Um, the right of first refusal provision that was referenced does not apply because Dr. Kroll is also employed full time and is not able to provide care during the work week. And we also have a temporary order in place right now. Um, so that order is the order that controls. Um, I just like to note, I, my client submitted this documentation to front of the court for the reimbursement. The fact that we're here arguing over $392 a month is I'm shocked that we're here arguing over this. Dr. Kroll makes probably at least four times as much as my client. I'll just go through, for example, a list of expenses for these children that my client has borne the sole responsibility for since the divorce. 100% of the nanny costs for child care last summer, which she didn't seek reimbursement for. Um, the GTAX tuition for the children for the 2021-2022 school year in the amount of approximately $12,000 that Dr. Kroll refused to contribute to. School laptops for the kids, their cell phones and their cell phone plans, clothing, volleyball camp, which Dr. Kroll agreed to reimburse my client $80 for last summer and still has yet to reimburse her despite her sending numerous messages. Um, uninsured health care expenses. My client has paid 100% of the uninsured health care expenses for the children since the divorce because Dr. Kroll has refused to contribute and She's submitted requests. He's demanded other itemized confirmation of payments, even though in the, the um, divorce judgment itself, it says that specifically plaintiff is not required to keep an accounting of expenditures for ordinary health care expenses. So this is this is a legitimate work related child care expense. There is nothing in the judgment or the deviation language that states that my client would bear the sole burden of child care expenses. And in fact, she has been exercising significantly, significantly more overnights since the divorce judgment than was contemplated in the calculation when that judgment was originally entered. A, a good portion of that was based on Dr. Kroll's agreement. Um, I understand there are other issues in dispute regarding the overnight time, but at least a period of that was by agreement. So she has really taken on the primary burden here of supporting these kids Meanwhile, Dr. Kroll has recently purchased a million dollar house. My client recently had to sell the marital home that she was awarded so that she can support these children and um, support, uh, frankly, the cost of this litigation. So this is, I think, a reasonable request on her part that he contribute to the child care expenses. They are legitimate. They are work related. And she's only utilizing this nanny three days a week when in fact she could utilize honestly five days. Um, and so we would request that that adjustment continue. Uh, Ms. Emulis, um, how, um, how does Ms. Kroll's uh, work from home uh, schedule make her unavailable to um, provide care for the children at the same time? Um, I I can go through a summary that my client just sent me this morning of her job description. I mean, I think we all understand um, work from home with kids, even, you know, a 10 and a 12 year old is extremely difficult. Um, my client is on calls. She has things that she has to attend to, and she needs to be 100% focused on her job. Um, so I guess just to summarize for the court, bullet, some bullet points on her roles and responsibilities with Blue Cross Blue, Blue Shield. Um, she has a customer facing role with several universities, HR leaders. She's responsible for handling student health plan benefit and plan inquiries, updating plan documents and digital content. She's the primary point person for handling critical and urgent inquiries from nearly two, uh, 20,000 students and HR leaders. Um, Ms. Kroll was just in my office yesterday and trying to um, 
juggle an emergency call with a university or to deal with university health insurance policies while we were trying to um, participate in the settlement conference. And so it really is like when these crises come up, it's very it's urgent and she has to be on it. And it's not something where um, she can just leave a call or attend to the kids. Um, she's also a project consultant for key, key and large group implementation and customer member education. And she coordinates resolution for complex claim and provider inquiries, care coordination for international students and triage of critical issues um, from groups and sales. And so it's, I mean, the parties have historically used this nanny over previous summers. I think they both understood Miss Kroll's demands in her job. And I, you know, I think we all as professionals can understand that it's extremely difficult to focus and 100% on your job when you're trying to juggle, um, juggle two kids at the same time. Okay. Which then- she does do during two days. But I mean, to do that five days per week full time is just not conducive to her role. And then what about this offer of free child care? Um, I I believe that what they're referencing is Dr. Kroll's offer to have his mother care for the children. Um, my understanding is while the parties were married, they historically did not use his mother to provide summer child care because she would charge them um, they've used this nanny Molly for, like I said, since Elena was three years old. Um, so this is someone who the children are familiar, familiar with. Um, and my client is not in agreement with Dr. Carl's mother providing childcare for the girls. Um, I honestly, I don't think that it's, it's his, um, his choice to dictate who provides child care during her parenting time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Norman. I'm not sure I have much else to add is, I mean, the allegations as far as not contributing uh, to some of these expenses, it's not entirely accurate. Quite frankly, that's the purpose of the upwards deviation of the $5,000. It was intended to include all of those things uh, that they're complaining about now. Um, as far as, yeah, that's correct. It's primarily uh, Mark's mother, the grandmother of these two girls, who these girls have not been able to see at all for six months at least now um, because of the plaintiff and uh, what's going on here. I don't want to wade too far into the weeds on this because we're waiting for this custody evaluation report, which we're expecting this week. And quite frankly, as a result of that report, which we've already agreed will become the controlling parenting time order in this case, there could be a significant change in custody and parenting time. So this objection, it may be moot. Her request for additional child support, that also may be moot. Um, We're not exactly sure yet. I think if we were going to go forward today, maybe take this under advisement pending receipt of uh, this custody evaluation, and then we're going to make some adjustments to child support anyways, I anticipate. So um, I'm not sure I have much else to offer here. I don't understand, um, you know, maybe Ms. Umulus could explain in greater detail the objection to a grandmother spending time with the grandchildren. Um, That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, Also with a 12 year old child who cares for other children, I still don't understand the um, reason why child care is needed in the first place here in this instance, especially with the plaintiff working from home. Um, it just seems like an unreasonable request for more money. Um, we have beliefs that uh, this entire this entire litigation is is a uh, attempt for uh, to increase the child support obligation and just deny Mark any relationship whatsoever with his children. And this is just further evidence of that as well. But like I said, I don't want to go too far into it. Um, We've agreed to adopt uh, the custody evaluation as the parenting time order in this court. So, you know, I would say let's just wait and see what that report says. And then we can address this objection and this request uh, after we receive that. Uh, Ms. Emilis, do you you have any um, objection to the court, I I guess, essentially adjourning this and just lumping, lumping it in with everything else outstanding? I would have an objection to that. I understand that we may um, we may be dealing with a change to the child support going forward, but 
they, these are expenses that are being incurred over this summer. They're not, uh, my client is in need of financial assistance with these child care costs. Um, you know, if child support is going to be modified going forward, these are still legitimate expenses um, that she's incurred for this summer for child care. And with respect to the allegations about Dr. Kroll's mother, I, I don't know how she's been prohibited by my client from seeing the kids for six months. She's She has full capability to see the children during Dr. Kroll's time. There's no order that prohibits her from seeing the children. And I guess I, I, didn't, I didn't really want to open up a whole Okay. You know, I just I want I asked a, a narrow question yeah. and and you want a decision today so that's what we'll yes. do. All right. Uh this is uh Emily Kroll versus Mark Kroll. This has been a hearing. Can I, sorry. Can I say something really quick? Yes, Dr. Kroll. Sorry. I'm I'm I don't work on Fridays. And so if there's ever days when there's daycare on Fridays, I'm always free. So I I guess I'm confused as to why the six hour rule would not work on Fridays when I literally have every Friday off. Well, is there, uh, Mr. Norman, Ms. Emulis, is there a question of fact uh, as to, uh, you know, as to whether uh, the right of first refusal might be utilized in place of uh, the nanny in this case? The nanny is not utilized on Fridays. Okay. The nanny is utilized Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's okay. not true because she's dropped them off on on Fridays, but okay. All right. So um, at this point, it looks like, um, I mean, there might be some evidentiary issues. Um, the court is uh, just relying on offers of proof today. Uh, Mr. Norman essentially has made a request to, uh, I think, adjourn this and conduct an evidentiary hearing on these issues, if I hear you correctly, Mr. Norman. That would be fine, Your Honor. All right. Well, since there are outstanding fact issues, um, I guess primarily uh, regarding the dates on which this nanny is actually providing care, uh, and, and I think that it is relevant that uh, if she's providing care when Dr. Kroll would otherwise be available on, and if Ms. Kroll is aware that he's available uh, and the uh, right of first refusal has been uh, requested and refused in, in place of the nanny, I guess in light of all of that, there are some issues that need to be sorted out. So for all of those reasons, I will go ahead and I will grant defendant's request to adjourn this hearing. We will conduct this uh, in an evidentiary fashion. It will be added to all other outstanding child-related issues. Uh, and the order from today will reflect that. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just one point of clarification. The the adjustment will continue. All prior, all prior orders, including the adjustment, will continue in full force and effect. Uh, for what it's worth, um, I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm just going to say that the... Uh, the child support assessment will, will continue as will all prior orders in full force and effect to the extent there's an argument that uh, this is an impermissible charge under the terms of the uh, consent judgment of divorce. I have some opinions on that, but I'm not going to weigh in at this time because uh, the court has uh, not issued, a, a, I guess, a ruling on the objection. So to the extent that FOC continues to assess that, that is what will